<laughs> our family loves adventures, especially adventures on our bikes. We've done everything from mountain biking downhill parks, national parks, state parks, rail trails, half day adventures, and even multi-day adventures. But one of the biggest problems we've had is keeping all of the family and friends together on these big adventures. So today we're introducing the newest tool, the EcoTrick Hammer. Let's get it put together. Okay, these are four inch wide tires. This thing all seems to be pretty well packaged. Came in like two days. Enjoy the ride, Ryan. I don't know that I've ever seen blue rims before. <laughs> it's cool though, right? Yeah. So here's the whole kit. I love that they gave us the nice Allen wrenches with the angled head so that you can use these when you're not able to fit it straight on. From what I can tell, the major things we have to do today are gonna be put the, install the front tire, the handlebars, pedals, reflectors, light, seat. Oh, the computer. Assembly instructions, step one, take your bike out of the carton, done. One thing I'm really concerned about is that this is set up European, which means the front brake is on the right and the back brake is on the left. And that's backward from what I'm used to and I am definitely afraid I'm gonna get that wrong. <laughs> here testing this bike on the snow today let's start with the specs of this eco trick hammer it comes with a 750 watt rear hub motor and has a top speed of 20 miles per hour it has a 48 volt system with a 13 amp hour battery in our testing we found that battery to last about 20 to 25 miles and the range was a little less in snowy conditions. It also comes with really powerful hydraulic disc brakes with a motor interrupt so that whenever the brakes are pressed, the motor automatically shuts off so you're not fighting the motor while also trying to brake. It has a Shimano seven speed quick shift drivetrain, which we found to be very easy to use. It has a coil suspension front fork, which produces a really nice and smooth ride, especially when we were on rougher terrain. That fork comes with a manual lockout so that you can make the bike fully rigid if you want to. It did come with these nice hard aluminum pedals. They don't have any pegs in them, but they are fairly sharp with the aluminum, so they do grab into my boots quite nicely. It has three different modes. It has a manual pedal mode. It has pedal assist, and it has a throttle. Using the keypad here, I can adjust to get five different speeds, or I can actually turn it off completely with zero. It has an odometer and a speedometer here. You can also walk the bike in a walking mode where the motor powers the bike at about one to two miles per hour. The bike itself weighs about 57 pounds, and the battery on top of that weighs an extra 10. So all in, this bike is almost 70 pounds. Okay, let's talk about safety for a second. The bike comes with a front light, but not a rear light. And the front light is powered by an internal battery, not the actual battery pack that powers the motor. It does have a battery indicator here that you can check to see how full or empty it is. You can charge the battery while it sits right on the bike. So you just pop that port open, plug it in while it's sitting in the garage or wherever you wanna charge your bike. One downfall to this bike is you can't take the battery out with the seat on. Because it slides out like this, I have to take the seat off, which is pretty easy with a nice quick release here, and the battery slides right out, and then I can charge it wherever I want to charge it. The battery has a couple different modes here. It has an off, and it has an unlock. So off keeps the battery locked in place. You can't pull the battery out. On is the same way. I can keep the battery in, but I can't remove the key and I can't remove the battery when it's in the on position. Unlock allows me to fully remove the battery from it, its locked position. If you look at the geometry of this bike, it is a very long bike. In fact, it didn't sit well on my Kuat bike rack. Because it's three to four inches longer, the back tire hangs off the back of the Kuat. 
So with that longer wheelbase, this bike looks, feels, and rides a lot more like a beach cruiser. But if you look at the front of the bike with the suspension fork, it looks a lot more like a mountain bike. It also has the really big sweeping handlebars instead of the flat riser bar like a normal mountain bike. So between all of those features, when you get on the bike and you're riding it on the various trails or roads, it feels much more like a beach cruiser than a mountain bike. This bike is meant to be sat on, it's meant to enjoy a ride, it's not meant to attack a trail. I felt like the bike handled best when I was sitting back and really letting the motor do the work, just enjoying the trail in general. Now I had my doubts about how well this bike would handle on the snow, but I was pleasantly surprised. So easy an 11 year old could do it, right? <laughs> right. Less, less, a little less, a little less, hang on, hang on. Let's power it down a little bit, you're going a little fast. Go, go, go! Whenever I hit about eight to 10 miles per hour, the bike popped up out of the snow and allowed me to float on top of the snow much better than I would have if I was riding a regular fat bike. There's something about the higher speed that allowed the bike to float better on top of the snow than if I was riding in a manual mode. So for that, I have to say the e-bike handled the snow way better than I thought and it made the ride much more enjoyable, which came in really handy for Ryan. This was Ryan's first snow bike ride. And after a few minutes, he was starting to get very frustrated. So I gave him a shot on the e-bike. At under five feet tall, his little legs can't make a full rotation on those pedals. But with the throttle, he was able to hold a level pedal so he could keep his feet planted on the pedals, his rear end on the seat, and he just hit that throttle and he cruised. And so this actually pointed out to me one of the benefits of having an e-bike. It is the great equalizer of all bikes. If you have somebody who's not up to the skills or the speed or the fitness of the rest of your riders, you can put them on an e-bike. When you're on flat road, gravel rides, rail trail rides, it's a perfect equalizer to help everybody keep up and ride together. The EcoTrick Hammer comes in under $1,300. And for under $1,300, I think you get a decent bike that handles a lot of different terrain is cheaper than buying a car. It's one way to avoid pain at the pump, have a great time in the outdoors. It meets a lot of different use cases. Well guys, that's been our video for today. We got a full ride in and Rogue got a full run in. We tested this bike back and forth. It was really more fun on the snow than I thought it would be. And I was impressed that you could ride. It was really fun. My, my legs were like pretty strained out when the pedals were leveled, but I didn't really need to pedal at all. That's what makes it nice, is if you have somebody that's probably not able to keep up with everybody else, throw in an e-bike, and now you get to level or equalize the whole group so that those that usually can't ride with everybody else can. That's one of the reasons we've loved having e-bikes, is getting grandmas to ride along with us, getting any of our friends that aren't used to riding, that aren't as conditioned as the rest of the family, get them on an e-bike. So. This is one that we're gonna keep around. We have some plans and some fun things we might do to it in the future, but uh, we hope you guys found this informative. If not, we hope you found it entertaining. Anything else you wanna say? I think that pretty much summed it up. We have at least one or two more months of winter to go. So uh, this probably won't be the last Fat Bike video. All right, that'll do it for us. Thanks for watching.